possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTGA podcast. Mikey Stafford and Roy O'Neill with you. Hope you're all well. We've been joined by a very happy David Tuberty, who has the, the flag is the... flying. David, <laughs> it's flying high. <laughs> How are you this morning, David? Um, voice is not great, but um, yeah, it's just buzzing, buzzing for Colum and the boys. Mm. Uh, it was just great lift, great lift for Clare football, and uh, oh, delighted, absolutely I, delighted. I enjoyed Colin Collins' interview after the match yesterday. Um, <laughs> It was the touch of the Vito Scarlitis to it, who famously in 1980, after he finally bet Jimmy Connors at the 18th time of asking, said nobody beats Vito Scarlitis 17 <laughs> times in a row. Um, <laughs> Colin Collins was like, you know, we, we couldn't have lost to Cork for a third time on Clare soil this year. We weren't about to let that happen. <laughs> so uh, there was a there was a real sense of, um, I think, a lot of satisfaction, David, that uh, after the league campaign and after two defeats to Cork, you know, that that was, I think, You'd, you'd you'd be the first to admit that the Clare football community needed that a lot, I'd say. Oh, it was huge. Absolutely huge. But um, going into yesterday, I just knew there was going to be a kickback by these guys. Um, I suppose the performance in the league, they really never had their full panel of players or full team out any day. They were always missing one key player every game or two key players. And just on uh, just yesterday, they had everybody back, bar I suppose. But... Um, but the performance was just outstanding in the second half. I think it was probably the best, best 20, 25 minutes of Clare football that I've seen in a long, long time. It was just free flowing and uh, the kick passing into the forwards, <laughs> which usually uh, the last few years wasn't there. But, <laughs> but um, no, it was. It was he uh, says roofing. No. <laughs> Where was that kick when um, I was playing? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, um, no, it's just everybody just, everybody just put their their shoulder to the wheel and just it was outstanding performance yeah. by everybody i was going to start with the game of comic but let's be honest the two, the two of you boys were in cusick park yesterday and um sure we might as well start with that rory you, you described it as the biggest game of the weekend so it's um you know yeah. clearly it's a significant defeat for cork who you know i was doing the maths on it yesterday now it's unlikely in leinster but if a division a lower division team makes the final in leinster and ulster then cork could well find themselves in in Talton Cup. It is possible. So it was a significant it, defeat. It's more than possible. I mean, all you need is Meath to make a Leinster final and Cavan to make an Ulster final, and that's it. They're out of the Sam Maguire. So mm. I think it's very eminently possible now. I mean, Meath on the same side of the, they're on the opposite side of the draw to Dublin. So that's not beyond the realms of possibilities. And <clears throat> Um, I'm sure Cavan will fancy Armagh on home soil and we'll get to Armagh, I'm sure, a little bit. But um, yeah, I think it's 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 an awful setback for Cork in loads of ways. But there can't be any excuses, really. They were beaten by the better team yesterday. And there was none from John Cleary after the game. Yeah, they were beaten by the, be the better side won. They played the better football. They had more shape in their attack. They were much more direct. They had better forwards which ultimately is what wins games. I mean, yeah. what did Cork score in the first half from play? One point, and it was the centre-back centre that scored that, I think, if I'm not it mistaken. It was, yeah. Centre-back scored us, yeah. yeah so no that, was, that, was towards, that was towards the end of the second half. So. No score from play yeah. in the first half. Like, just, I, I, when I saw the, the, the team named, I said, but look, maybe is he going to go with that team? I just looked at the half forward line. I'm saying to myself, there's not enough scores there. Like there just isn't enough scores in that half forward line. Not, you're not going to rack up a big enough tally. Um, I said this way back in the day when he was playing that half forward line in, or in the early stages of the league, Mikey. I, 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 they don't ship in it often enough. But look, you can't just can't take anything away from Clare. I think this really is more about Clare. They fought in their backs. They needed to preserve their championship status in Sam Maguire. They still haven't done that. There's no, still, there's still, there's still, there's <laughs> still, still, there's, there's still a, 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 another, another hurdle to jump. Yeah. And, and a, as we know, it was, it was a massive game last year that went to extra time and penalties, which they were beaten in. So they'll be very conscious of that, but they've given themselves every opportunity now. And 
Jamie Malone, unbelievable yesterday in terms of the role. I think uh, the way they were coached, the clarity around them knowing what they, <clears throat> the way they wanted to set out. I mean, the game very defensive, but both teams were. But Warrior. Claire, Claire, Claire just seemed to have more. Uh, they they'd more of a threat up front and just seemed to have more purpose when they moved the ball from back to front and fully deserved their win. You can take nothing from them and just say congratulations, well done. Yeah, there's yeah, a big, big just, change at the halftime, wasn't there, uh, David? The midfield, Darren yeah. O'Neill coming in for Cahill O'Connor. That, that, yeah. that seemed to be a, a, a very significant switch. Because that was key, Darren coming in. Um, I think I just I was very surprised with Cork. They kept going with the um, the overload kick out on the right or left. I just they, they didn't change it up at all. It, like everybody knew where the kick out was going. Everybody in the stand knew where the kick out was going yeah. the whole time. And uh, Darren was there, and Darren. I think he caught two clean kickouts and broke a few in after that. But he there won the breaks, and I just I just thought Cork were just yeah just one dimension that they were just there was no change up at the kickout. Um, they're under a lot of pressure. Nobody looking for a short or anything like that. Um, but Darren O'Neill's uh, coming in at halftime was a massive massive factor for Clare, and um, it's just yeah it was it was a it was a game changer. It surely was. Speaking of game changers, David, can you just uh, I think most people, you know, when they're thinking of Claire, Claire players of the last ten years, um, the kind of the the kind of the guy who seems like the successor, I suppose, to yourself and maybe the older generation is Keelan Sexton, and he really he really stood up yesterday. Can you just tell us a little bit about what it is that makes him so good because he he is he's a special talent, you know, and he's one of those players. Oh, geez, if he was playing for Dublin or uh, or Tyrone, he'd be an all star every year kind of jobby. Like he's he is. He does to me at least. Well, he took, he took the, like, like, he's that good. He took Daniel O'Mahony to the cleaners yesterday, Mikey. I yeah. mean, that's Daniel O'Mahony would be one of Cork's, you know, better defenders. Yeah, I'd like in the, just starting off the game, like you can see straight away, Keelan. I think he won two balls, kicked the point, hmm. uh, had had a bit of a wide, but then Cork had to, Cork had to bring a man back in front of him and put a sweeper in front of him and try to block off that quick ball. They kind of did in the first half, but the second half. Keelan came out and about, just got on ball, and he's a fellow. When the gander is up, he's uh, there's no better man to give him the ball, and he was looking all day for it. He he won't freeze. Um, players came off him. He just uh, yeah, um, he just outstanding performance for him. Um, so I'm delighted for Keelan now. Um, he he uh, injured like he was injured for the league for a good few of the games. Um, back in full fitness now, and he just yeah, brilliant performance by him and. Um, Clare need need to get him the ball as much as they can now uh, in the next few next few weeks. Mm. Um, yeah, for for Corkroy, a big problem did seem to be the kick out their own and Clare's kick outs. Just just they had no platform in the game really, did they? No, and look, the conditions were tricky enough as well. I don't know, like it did feel to me like they weren't going to take a chance going short just because of the wind and it, you know it was it was wet at times so. No, like I mean, the, the kick out, the kick out. I think fair enough. That's one part of their problem. But the other part, the big issue for me is, like when you're set up against, like Cork have a, has struggled playing defensive teams since defensive football or first arrived on the scene back in the early noughties or certainly 2010, 2011 when we saw Donegal's iteration first come on. First, he did on. all right in twenty ten. In fairness, yeah, but like they 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 have struggled. <laughs> for whatever reason they've never been able to manage it now one of the big one of the big buzz phrases that i often hear is when modern gaelic football is don't take the ball into contact i take the opposite view you know like i think that maybe is part was part of cork's problem yesterday is that you needed to take the ball into contact you needed to break through those lines you needed to have kind of support runners and lads that were prepared to maybe get a belt or maybe get bottled up or try. I mean, if you look at the way Dublin will say, take down defensive teams to make the pitch big, hug it from left to right, and then have really good strike runners kind of breaking through. And then over 40, 50, 60 minutes, eventually you'll find a way and the gaps will appear. We still, Cork still seem to struggle to sort of figure that type of game out and just didn't have enough uh, powerful runners, lads prepared to say, like it was a lot of shifting around the edges and going back and forth and right across and waiting for the perfect opening. That's not going to come. 
Um, especially with the way Clare were set up. They were set up, they were really well organised. They'd obviously targeted this game in a big way. They know that Cork struggle with these types of game plans. They executed it to perfection and they got a very, very deserved victory. Right. Before we move on, David, there's no better man to give us the temperature of the the the, the Clare football community. What 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 was the conversation at the at the bar last night? What what what's the ceiling for this Clare team this year? What 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 will be a successful year now? It already seems, despite league disappointment, like a pretty good championship, but obviously not falling to Limerick is kind of key now, I guess. Yeah, that's key. Um two weeks' time against Limerick is going to be a massive for a massive game. Um you see what Limerick uh, did last year to us. Um, they overturned us in Cusick Park and they're going to look at Clare. Um, I know that they'll probably look at Cork and go. Well, might we might get a win over Cork, but after seeing Clare winning yesterday, they'll they'll fancy their chances. Um, I think Cullum will get the boys um grounded hopefully you know um next few days, and just to get ready, it's um hopefully if we get over that, you've got a an Ireland Ireland series and we're into the group stage, which would be brilliant for Clare. Um, which um. But um, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a poor league, but uh, I think the championship. Everybody's buzzing around the place. The, the like the pitch, the pitch was. They all came into the pitch after the game. Those kids taking photos with the players and the adults hugging each other and the dog. There was there was just great. It was, it was unbelievable to be in the stand, um, and to see everything happen that's there. First, yesterday. That's the first time you've enjoyed being in the stand, then David. You, to, first time, you were saying you were saying you had you had, you had to pay for your own ticket, David. Did you? <laughs> <It is. laughs> I thought on the uh, Clare County Clare County Board would be giving you a couple of freebies after all your years of service. Um no, I I got a ticket alright, but I had to give it to the mother. The mother was going over oh, to the game as well. So um yeah, yeah I had to get I got to get I had to get a ticket before the game quick. But um no, it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant performance. And yeah, looking forward to two weeks' time. Yeah, those scenes were great, Ryan. It is nice to hear like managers like admitting their players are going to go and celebrate a championship win, you know, Claire, like Claire are celebrating. Uh, they, Davey Burke said it last night as well. Of course, we're going to celebrate this. And obviously the New York lads will probably have to be peeled out of a few, <laughs> a few bar- Manhattan bars in about a week's time. But like, it's a truncated season, yada, yada, yada. But like, we've had this conversation before, but <laughs> if like young lads in the prime of their health who are training nonstop for six months can't go and have a few beers and the, the sky won't fall down. Like what's the point in it all? They're not monks, you know, it's not a, it's not a pilgrimage they're on. And you, I think the social side of it is a very, very important part as well. And yeah. I think it's fantastic for players to be able to do that. And I think it creates a good bond. I mean, I know we'll get yes. on to, we'll get on to Mayo Ross Common. I guarantee you Mayo went out last night. And I'd say they had a good night as well. You know? <laughs> they've yeah. got they've got five weeks anyway. So yeah, you know, so there you go. But yeah. the Clare, like we met up with the Clare boys um in Kiran's afterwards and like it's it's brilliant to see all the players out there and mingling with um all the supporters and stuff and uh Cullum was there as well. And I haven't seen Cullum Cullum in the bar in a long time. <laughs> but um no, it's just brilliant to see everybody. Like they have to go out, they have to enjoy themselves. Um, like as you could said, I, could I ask? Could I ask you a question about Cullum? I just think he's look. He's one of the best managers around. But I often wonder about him, David. Would he? Let's say if he decided at some stage now that he was going to finish up with Clare um, at this, this season, next season, you know, hopefully never from a Clare football perspective. <laughs> but let's say if he did. Would he be able to bring what he brings to Clare if he were to take a job with another county? Or is he very um, is he very specifically um a Clare football man and the magic that he has just wouldn't translate if he went elsewhere? I suppose with Colum, he knows the ins and outs of Clare football. He's been there, he's been there for minors all the way up, 21s, um, seniors. He's involved with Cratlow, so uh, Cratlow football. They they play league. They're in Division Two at the moment now, but they they did play it Division Three and Four. So he got to see every player in the county really, mm. and he got to every single game and clear like it's um, it's unbelievable. Like he could be at three if it was a championship weekend, he could be at six or seven matches the weekend. So he knows clear football in and out, which is unbelievable. Like and uh, if he did go to another place, uh, another county, um, would he get the same thing? probably he might do like he's like when he came in first he, he set the standards for Clare football like Clare he cut out a bit of the um I suppose you could say the 
Messing. Uh, the, the messing and the fellas enjoying their nights they might go on more than one night. <laughs> they might go on one or two days. But um, yeah, he put the foot down earlier on and he kind of sorted out Clare football. And um, he probably could like, but um, no, he just, he knows Clare football in and out, as I, as I said. Um, he knows every young fella coming through, whether it's 16, 17 year olds, he knows everybody. And what's great about him, he gives the young fella the chance um, with, this, with the senior team. And but, you need to, and he they give him like if you're good enough, you'll play. That's what Colum does. Mm. So it's yeah, it's hopefully you no, know, he does maybe stays on another few years. Um, uh, because I think for me, I think they might be in a bit of bother if he does go. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, so it's yeah, hopefully, yeah. hopefully, he's down. Uh, we won't we won't talk about such sad things on yeah. a happy day. Um, <laughs> Roy, why, why, why are you bringing the mood down, Roy? Um, <laughs> well, do you, do you really want to know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mis- misery loves company. Yeah. Uh, um, so we'll move on to the the, the big match in Connacht. Rory, um, yeah. this is a good stat. Um, Mayo's last four league titles, 1970, 2001, 2019 and 2023, were all followed by defeats to Roscommon in the Connacht yeah. Championship. So um, you, I think, were the only person who backed them on the podcast last week, last week Rory. You'd obviously <laughs> been trawling through the history books. Well, it wasn't anything to do with history. I just thought it was primed and set up for them for the classic ambush. It would have been difficult for Mayo to... It, it's going to be. It was go, always going to be difficult for Mayo to keep that kind of a train on the tracks from uh, first whistle to the end. Mayo were going to be in an All Ireland semi final. There's absolutely no doubt about that in my mind. But I thought they might. I, I did think there was a good chance that they would get caught on Sunday last. But I think it'll be the best thing for Mayo. It'll be absolutely like if you think about it, right? So they have six weeks. As, as I said earlier, chances are they went out last night because they would have had a delay in maybe celebrating from the week before having won the league title. So they've, they've gone out. They've probably, they might have even had a row, you know. Um, Kevin Kevin will probably have an opportunity and I'm sure there would be budget there. You might decide to take them away for a week now and go do a warm weather week and you know, they might even go back to their clubs, maybe play a league game, take a break from the group and the stresses of that environment and come back three weeks out and still have plenty of time to have uh, your prep and your run into the All-Ireland Series. I think it'll be the best thing that'll have, that's happened. It was great for the championship because we've had a weekend of, I not say shocks. No, I don't <laughs> think Mayo beating Roscommon is a massive shock. And I don't think Clare beating Cork was a shock. But we've had games that have really ignited the early rounds mm. and obviously with what happened in New York but from a Mayo perspective I think it could end up becoming a blessing and from Ross Common's point of view it's just yeah it's it was typical Ross Common typical yeah, yeah um, we don't want to focus too much on Mayo here because uh, it does seem that Davy Burke's nose was put out last week and I didn't think Davy Burke's like a guy who kind of lets this kind of stuff wash over him David but he said I thought there was a lot of dis- disrespect during the week we finished third in Division 1 on merit and we were completely written off. You swear we were a lower level team altogether. I'm sure our boys were frustrated <laughs> by that and I'm glad they put it right. Now, Dave, I didn't hear that. I heard a lot of people tip Mayo Day, but I also heard nearly everybody say this is a flick of, flip of a coin. There isn't much between these teams. But I guess sometimes managers, camps, players, you, you kind of need that siege mentality. You need a bit of us against the world, don't you? Ah, you do, sure. Managers are going to use everything. They're going to pull strokes <laughs> to get their players fired up and stuff like that. But um, no, it was I myself. No, I thought I thought Mayo would. I I fancied them for the All Ireland, but um, I didn't. I don't know. Um, it's just I suppose the seven days turnaround. I suppose just it's tough. It's tough to get players riled up again for for seven days. Um, Mayo were just or Ross Cameron were just waiting there to to ambush him, as you said. Um, the goals are a massive factor in the game, um, and just it was just as you know, Mayo they just they were running into crowds. They couldn't get those shots off. They were just the finish Roscommon was very just, frantic, wasn't it? They had very, so much to yeah. ball, but they just couldn't Roscommon, get into a scoring yeah. position. They were just swamping them. There was bodies bodies thrown everywhere by Roscommon, which was which was great to see, and like they'd be buzzing after that. It's a big game against Galway now in, in two weeks' time, but yeah, um, it doesn't you know, get any easier. Pretty, yeah. No, it doesn't. But I just, I just thought the way Mayo were going. I thought if they got over uh, yesterday and got over Galway, I know they're playing. They might have been playing Sligo in uh, Sligo or New York in a few weeks' time. They might have had a break. 
might have mm. been able to rest a few players. But um, no, it's, I, I suppose it will stand to them this, this five weeks um, and they will be there, thereabouts at the end, coming to the end of the year. Yeah. Um, Ender Smith, Rory, is a, oh. a force of nature. Uh, it's unreal. And uh, Ender McGinley kind of highlighted him last week on the podcast mm. and also then in a, in a column for the website on Sunday. So like if Ender McGinley has a good game, or sorry, if Ender Smith has a good game, um, you know, Ross Common have a chance. He had a fantastic man, game man of the and match. they won. Man of, yeah, man of the match. He's unbelievable and I I think there's they they were just up for it from the first whistle and he tip he led from the front you know like his ability to drift into midfield win high ball with against lads that are bigger than him you know charging into the forwards you know winning penalties and like ah oh, listen I just thought like he, he was it was a heroic display from him and but 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 Donny was good as well the brother who's like you know has got quite a lot of miles on the clock and I was surprised to see him start Connor Cox obviously missed out. Uh, but did come on and kicked an unbelievable score himself, which kind of shows sure. they have a bit of depth there as well. So well, the swords, I think they have an abundance of depth. If oh, yeah, yeah, up, yeah, yeah. And be, be, you know, be, I thought Ben O'Carroll was outstanding. Didn't score as much yesterday. Did he get a point yesterday? He didn't score, no. Didn't score, but he was no. very, very effective in drifting out, linking play up. You know, like they played, they played the game kind of on their terms, by and large. Now, I should say, I thought the free count was a bit ropey. I mean, I think it was some, I got the stats afterwards. It was 24 10. Hmm. Now, I'd be a In little. Those conditions, it's a bit of a lottery, isn't it? Well, <laughs> well, well, well t- t- 24 frees against Mayo versus 10 against Ross Common. War was the difference and the disparity in the level of tackling that wide? I would yeah. argue, no. Like, he blew Aidan O'Shea on two occasions for bumping his man out of the way on a throw ball. Throw and, ball I was, yeah. and I was kind of saying to myself, for sure, what's Aidan O'Shea supposed to do in that scenario? That's exactly what a throw ball is. It's a physical contest for the football. And he blew against him. I thought there was, yeah, it, I, I think Mayo found it harder to get freeze yesterday. Now, that's without wanting to go down the road of ref bashing. Uh, because look, his interpretation that's fine but I think it was a hard game to referee to be fair there was a a lot of stoppages there was a lot of uh, I think Dara was saying that uh, the Ross Common physio certainly got his steps in with the amount of times that he was running in and out of the field you know he was very he was probably the busiest fella on the whole Ross Common team yesterday if you're so. going to be fouled 24 times Roy you're going to get you're going to pick up a lot of news yeah, yeah yeah but look I suppose that's the nature of the way they set themselves out, that was also a part of their tactics. And to my mind, look, it's a fault, I suppose. And maybe it's an issue for Gaelic football in a broader sense. But look, it's not for today or tomorrow because it won't be fixed this season anyway. But, you know, time wasting is another part of the game. And I think Roscommon executed that side of it really well as well. Yeah. Um, it's not easy, David, in, in those conditions to... To rack up two eight doesn't sound like much, I suppose, in modern Gaelic football. But it was winter football, my yeah. Like. Taking was... the, the conditions into consideration, that was it was it was good scoring by Roscommon, particularly against the wind in the first half. Yeah, it was. It was um, the conditions, I suppose, in Kilsey Park yesterday. I think they got it kind of got away with the, the worst of the conditions. Mm-hmm. I think it was just when the game was over. I think the rain started to come in, and mm-hmm. then you could see it above in McHale Park. The conditions come in, and um, as I said, the goals the goals were a massive factor. Um, it came at the right time for us coming, and it's just the, in conditions. Everything is it's the bounce of the ball. When you try to bounce the ball, it goes away from you. Or uh, as I said, the referee was kind of he was letting that go for Ross Common, but not for Mayo. But <laughs> uh, but like it's 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 just I suppose Mayo um, Ross Common let Mayo come on top of them, let him come in, and then surround them. Uh, packing wise, and I, I suppose they just had enough bodies behind it to turn over the ball all the time. But um, the scores came. Connor Cox had a fine, a brilliant score at the end. Um, they could have got a few more. Um, but Ember Smith is just he's a he's an animal of a man. He's his performance yesterday was outstanding. He can play anywhere. He could play a corner forward, full forward, wing forward, wing centre forward, midfield, anywhere. I'd say he could even try himself in the backs. He's just a big, massive presence. Like to stand beside the man is. To, um, he's just. He's a big physical man, um, but he's outstanding. He can kick left and right, and he can do he can do everything. It's uh, he's if he was any any other team, he'd he'd have definitely all stars 
uh, most of the years. Mm. But um, no, it's it's great, great for Ross Common and himself. And uh, no, it's it's mighty. Yeah. Um, the other game in Connacht, obviously, Rory, uh, definitely. <laughs> um, I don't think. Um, I don't think uh, the, the McGinney, sorry, Johnny McGinney, would be saying, uh, "Oh no, we got disrespected in the press last week. Nobody was giving New York a chance." Um, <laughs> There was actually murmurings, Roy. That's the thing. I know. I think there's always murmurings in this. One, I think. Yeah. I think. I think, especially Mikey, when people saw their squad, <laughs> there was more than murmurings. You know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, they, they've got some serious players, haven't they, Roy? They do like they do, I and mean, players of high caliber, high quality. Um, if I was John Cleary, I'd be sending an SOS to New York <laughs> there and get Mark Ellis back for the footballers. But uh, thought he was very good and sh- like a tree natural. Born Americans on the team, I think, is was very yeah, interesting. And one scored as well. the winning penalty. Yeah, so yeah. I, and nine thousand in the Bronx, an unbelievable story. What a way to kick start the whole thing off! Yeah, it is incredible. Bit of an anomaly if they make it to a Connick final that they'll be in the group stages of Sam Maguire, but won't be in the group stages for the Talton Cup. I think that's an odd, an unusual scenario. I certainly yeah. would imagine. I'd like they, to know who's paying for it if they do. Beat the <laughs> well, this is the stay, thing. Like this is the thing. If they beat Sligo, I mean, there'll be a few uh, bean counters in Croke Park. But the GA very, president very would be. Uh, the GA president <laughs> would be sympathetic to their cause, but I can imagine Tom Ryan having a, oh. <laughs> having a look at the invoice, going, "I'm not sure about this, Larry." Fifty. I'd say the price of the tickets might be going up for next week. Fifty people flying over. What? How many times at that stage they have to do it? Well, that should be on top of the Sligo game. Five. Yeah, and they'll get at a kind of final if they were to make it. Final will be five times. Yeah, yeah <laughs> that that that's price that's before even. they make a preliminary yeah. quarter final. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know, like, but look, I, it, it, it was. It was hard and harsh and tough on Leitrim. I think it's a big lesson learned in fairness. Eamon flagged it up on the podcast last week when the last time they were out there, I think they were taken to extra time as well. So it was mentioned uh, that this could happen at some point. Sligo got a big scare last year as well. Exactly. I I think the other thing as well, which I don't know if it has been mentioned, but I do think it's a point worth mentioning. And it'd be good to get David's views on this. I think playing on a plastic pitch gives them a big a big advantage. Like they obviously do all their training there. I mean, no other inter-county match that I know of takes place on an artificial surface. And it just... Does Limerick it used one in the league last year, remember that? I think that was the only other time, I think, <laughs> you, you know. Like so of, yeah. I, I don't know if that makes a huge difference. Like the game, is it? It's a, Gaelic football is played slightly differently on artificial surfaces. You know, it just seems a little bit faster for some reason. And... A lot more open. The cameraman was having a fierce, fierce <laughs> hard time trying to keep the ball, trying to keep the ball in, in shot. The big green wall doesn't help either. Yeah, it doesn't, no, it it doesn't yeah. seem like a rectangle or something. It's funny to kind of but, it's an optical illusion. But what would your experience of artificial surfaces be, David? Like, how do you find playing on them? Uh, don't like it at all. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've had a lot of problems with uh, the AstroTurf. Um, for me, my Achilles and stuff like that, that's, that's one of the reasons I probably kind of packed it in was what Claire, Claire train and UL uh, for the majority of the year, uh, like in November, December, January, February, they will train in, in the AstroTurf from UL. And I think it's a massive factor. I think it's very hard on players, especially going on to grass pitch afterwards. The bounce of a ball is, is totally different. Um, but it is it is faster game and stuff. But um, I would be telling people to kind of st- stay, to stay away, from, stay, stay away from, from it. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just it's it's hard. It's a totally different game, and I think probably that's what kind of each of them took them a while to probably get used to. It, I suppose unless they got to an Astro uh, Tough pitch the week before or something like that. I suppose might not have had time. But um, yeah, it's it's a huge factor. It's a huge factor, mm-hmm. and I think that would probably be. One of the things for Leitrim was that it would have been an extra tough to catch him, I'd say. Yeah. Yeah. I play on it every Tuesday night, Roy, and I'm brilliant. I, I, I score <laughs> two or three goals most weeks, to be honest with you. It, it, it's, it, it's very interesting, though, um, when like being involved in a club now, and if you're if you're trying to organise a game or if you're offering a game or taking a game and the mention of an Astro turf is put out there, teams literally run away. Yeah. Just don't, just don't want to play like like no. like and all of these the, the hilarious thing is all these facilities are being built all over Ireland. Yeah, 
Uh, like there's a new there's a new one just after being built in swords now a fantastic one right which is an incredible setup and um, nobody wants to play on them because no. they're they're, yeah. they're they're considered dangerous and you you can pick up injuries on them and yeah but like look I don't think it was the sole reason why Leach yeah. lost yeah yeah it is but interesting though because I would like to say play soccer on him obviously only messing the scores like 32 31 so if you score a few goals it's not a big deal but you play on your feet you don't make sliding tackles like even no, in goal you don't no. tend to dive because you get like carpet burn um no. I, the only time i played ga on an artificial pitch was playing in goal um so you don't really have a choice but i couldn't imagine david you know the rough and tumble of a championship match um not only as you mentioned like the muscular injuries but there's just the sheer pain of the abrasions and like mm. the the burns you get it's oh, yeah. it would play on my mind anyway i think it would do yeah like it's you be it's a different story trying to throw your body on the line in an astro turf mm. i suppose in the grass you have a bit of cushion but um yeah it's 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 totally different um anytime i see at the moment now with with doing big we're, we're training our pitch is closed at the moment so we kind of have to train in astro turf but it's it's just so it's so demanding like it's the twisting and turning i suppose my age, I suppose it's not. Uh, you it's keep, not. Uh, you keep running in straight lines. <laughs> straight lines. You're not just <laughs> turning. Yeah. And I, I was, I was actually talking to Paul Finn the, the last day as well um, in Dublin, and he was telling me the same thing. Like he just, he just, he can't, he can't train on the astroturf as well. It's, it's, mm. uh, it's too demanding. Like, but um, it's, I'd hate to see next year. I know the Connacht, um, dome. Was the, the the dome was for the the national the league final or not the league final. Sorry the. Um, the yeah. FPD league mm. that was played in it, and it was it just it didn't look. In it. Yeah, it just didn't didn't look didn't look right on the game. And um, the pitches are getting better, but yeah, yeah I don't think they are getting better. Back is a particularly advanced. No, uh, and you see in American American football as well. I think they're they're giving out that um, certain pitches are astroturf and certain are grass pitches, and they want everybody to play a grass pitch because there's such a difference in the games and all yeah. that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, hopefully this, it doesn't go down the road. That we'll be playing on Astro Turf in yeah. a few years' time. I, I wouldn't want to be taken away from the victory. Obviously, Rory was it yeah. was fantastic and mm. it, it was dramatic. And I loved um, uh, McAtee's quote, uh, quote about uh, the winning penalty. Uh, I know the TV didn't catch it, but I was sitting on the water box. I didn't watch the penalties. I was just going by the reaction of the crowd. He says, "When I knew Mikey Brosnan was stepping up last, I knew he was going to score because he actually didn't care if he scored or not." <laughs> no, it doesn't make sense. But he's never won before. He's never known any different. He grew up playing in New York since he was no age. I just knew he was going to step up and it was going to happen. Rory, you saw the penalty, I'm sure. <laughs> there was no doubt in his mind. My so God, belted into the top corner. It. Absolutely buried it. And unbelievable scenes afterwards. Like, it's gas, you know. I mean, you, 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 it was, I, the thing that struck me was the amount of children that were running on. Yeah. Like they're ob they're yeah. obviously all... Americans, you would assume, you know, and it was, um, yeah, it was, it was some way to kickstart the whole championship. Pity it was, it was on so late. I suppose that's probably why, maybe, got missed a little bit given the time that it threw in at. But um, it was just, yeah, it's an un un unbelievable story. And seeing them now in Sligo in a couple of weeks' time will be. Um, be another leg to that and really interesting to see how that game plays out. They'll have they'll be quite confident going into it. Like, I mean they, that could that could be a dangerous enough fixture for Sligo. You'd imagine Sligo will have too much for them, but you just wouldn't know. Oh, and you look at that New York team, there's a lot of lads there who've won a lot of championship matches. Can they all come back? Can they all can they all yeah. can they all yes. come back? Are they all, are they all yeah, McAtee said of the of the forty three on his panel or 43 who travelled, I guess that includes backroom team. The 43 involved last year, 40 were able to come for the Offaly match. So there's That's, obviously yeah. three three lads there who, <laughs> who, who are going to remain nameless. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully they're not starting players anyway. Yeah, but I guess it's different now because the, the immigration to the States, it's it's done. It's it's a different kind of a demographic it's a different kind of prof kind of uh careers going over there now and lads are going over with visas i guess so slightly different um i guess we'll leave it there that's just to mention the scores in the other matches um uh, leash beat wexford uh awfully beat longford by a point in a bit of a dinger uh wicklow had to work against carlo but ended up winning by eight points and 
Tipperary also probably had a harder match against Waterford than they might have been expected. And yeah. uh, they needed three goals there. One of them was was a fantastic goal, actually. And um, he, yes, in, in Ulster, Armagh had a fairly anodyne win over Antrim now, 20 points to 1 8. I don't think I don't think we learned a whole lot, Rory. I think we were hoping the old Armagh would come back for this match, and I, I think they did, but it might be a bit of an illusion. I, I don't know. If yeah, a couple of a, bright, yeah, couple contest. of bright. Yeah, like, I mean, the game was, what, what, when did Antrim get their first score? Was it 16 minutes before they actually had any score on the board? And I think maybe Armagh were 5-0, 6-0 up at that stage. And the game was over, really. Um, but I think there were a couple of bright spots for uh, Armagh. Obviously, the form of Conor Turbot. But I thought um, uh, Shane McPartland at midfield yeah. was Brilliant. outstanding. And I think that's a big, uh, that was a big plus. I mean, he kicked... I don't know, did he have three or four, three or four points? points yeah. Three or four points from play. He was, you know, a, a real presence, a superb on kickouts, and um, a big boost given the fact, look, that they have been trying to, you know, shift Rian O'Neill into a, a multitude of roles. I think him and Ben Creeley um, have that partnership locked down now, and I think that would be a big plus for Kieran McGinney and the Ironman management as they head into Brefney, which is going to be really tough. You know, sure Cav, Cav, Cavan away now in the next round. And uh, Cavan, as we know now, have it all to play for. Yeah. Um, and that's it. Next week after a, 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 a hectic start to the championship, as is usual, we have two matches next week. For Manor and Derry <laughs> on Saturday and <laughs> Tyrone v Manahan, which is a good one. But that's uh, yeah. that's on Sunday and that, that's our lot. So um, listen, we'll be back on Thursday to preview those. Uh, thank you very much, David. And uh, we'll be back in a minute to the back on the league final with Shane McGrath. He hits it! He hits it! It's over the bar! Oh! Holy Moses! Welcome back. We've been joined by Shane McGrath to discuss uh, the latest notch on Limerick's battle axe. Uh, they, uh, they defeated uh, Kilkenny 220 to 15 points below in Parky Cueve. Um, Shane, uh, the, dare I say it about God's own game, but it's all getting a little bit boring and predictable, isn't it? <laughs> oh, sure, these lads, isn't it? Like, um, it's just the dominance of them, and like, even look, we could go through stats and everything and all like that, but I think uh, nowadays, I think people are really au fait with kind of the stats side of it, you know. Um, but I think what maybe we can try and discuss is the scary facts, as I was saying to you there, Rory, mm. even in a, in a message yesterday, like that. Like, 42 scoring chances for Limerick. Took 22 of them, okay? They had 20 wide, isn't it? 15 of them yeah. in the second half, right? Like, there's no there's no reliance for them on one player, right? And I think that was emphasised, and I was just doing some stuff even for last week there, Mikey, and they had no player in the top 10 scorers for the National Hurling League, Limerick, right? So there's no reliance on one guy. They had seven scorers yesterday, and, and as I said, 15 wides in the second half. They could have easily had 9, 10, 11 scores yesterday. But it's it's just getting to the stage where like you're just going in hoping that they all get, I don't know, like... COVID? Did, was it the New Zealand? Did, <laughs> did, did, well, not that, like, remember, was it the New Zealand rugby team in, in the World Cup in South Africa that time? Did they all get... Uh, food poison. Food poison. poison. Yeah. And, um, there, was there questions in the France soccer team in they, this they, year? They, in they the need World a dodgy lasagna like Spurs I, I, that time. I, I don't know. Does someone, does someone need to get in there into the into their, their camp and try and do something like that? Because at the moment, that's the only way you seem to be able to stop them. And, and what's worrying, lads, is Dara Donovan's interview afterwards spoke very well, no, I thought he's... They always mentioned the panel, but the one thing stuck out for me was he said, we've 37 lads and they, and for the first time in a long time, we they, they could all train last week. So, like, you're not, like, everybody's going to be back. Everybody's in full health. Their competition is ridiculous. You have to figure out a new position, positional name for what Barry Nash is doing. Um, I don't know what you call it. We had the brick flick a few years ago. Maybe this is the Barry Nash. That's all you can call it because... As I was saying in a tweet there yesterday, like 10 years ago, you'd say to Conor Ford, look, your job is hooks, blocks, three scores from play. Now you're saying to Conor Ford, you need to keep Conor back scoreless from play. And yeah. that's realistic. What's happening there? And look, for me, lads, there's, there, you could go on and on and on. How do you try and beat them? You, you need to have a phenomenal performance and hope they're well below par. But maybe try and keep Barry Nash as close to his own goals as possible. Maybe play three, even four in the good forward line. Do something different that hasn't been done. Because at the moment, lads, 
everything that's trying to be done isn't working and it's just getting and it's not limerick's fault it's just getting to a stage where i'm almost getting bored now and i hear and I, like i love hurling lads. i love them more than anything like but it's just getting to a stage where we know what's going to happen yeah rory i was the, the, the thing that's almost and i don't mean to be despairing like ge- genuinely we're all you know happy for the people of limerick they 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 suffered quite a lot as a extra man i can appreciate how much they suffered through the through the drought and uh now they're getting their rewards but Roy, the, the the thing that's a little bit worrying for me is when kilkenny the only team that we can equate to limerick were in their pomp and shane's shane's tipperary were taking them on or it was it was cork or it was claire or it was whoever you always got a sense that they believed they could win. Like they really thought this will be our day. Like, you know, especially when you listen to Liam Sheedy talking, like he was convinced. And even though they had some bad beatings and all that in the finals, they bounced back. I'm getting to the point now where I think most teams are beaten before they go out on the pitch against Limerick because, as Shane says, they've tried everything and it hasn't worked. So they're going out into the field saying, oh, well, maybe they'll all get food poisoning, lads. <laughs> <laughs> food poisoning or COVID. Yeah, that's kind of when you're living in. A uh, very um, fanciful world if you're depending on things like, like that. But I suppose maybe in one sense, the season now from an intercounty manager, particularly in Munster, your season is probably framed a lot around when you play them um, and where they fall in terms of the pecking order. Because it may even be the case now where you're saying, well, look, we're going to get zero points from that game anyway. So let's make sure, right, How where, where are they fought? Do we play them first? What kind of pressure is that going to put us under? Or do we play them last? Where maybe they're already qualified for a monster final and might have one small bit of an eye off the ball. I was reading Dalo this morning. He seems to feel that there's only one time to catch him, which is in a semi-final. Jeez, I don't know about that either. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I think uh, I think what they learned from nineteen, Rory, you know the semi final, like yeah. the, the one, the one game, the last game they lost. I'd say they're getting the semi finals now. That that is definitely been brought back up by someone. That the yeah. hurt that they had from that, you know, there's some clip being shown. I'd say, I'd say maybe what happened that year in twenty nineteen against Kilkenny is being used, definitely still used for the hurt because like they haven't felt the hurt since then. Like, so. Yeah. If they want motivation to say, right, what do we do? Um, let's try to match where we got back there nearly four or five years ago. And remember, <laughs> remember how that much hurt? And they're like, yeah, that's never going to happen to us again. And you're like, what do you and mean? they all run through the walls <laughs> of the dressing yeah. room. Yeah. <laughs> and like, and and I think like one of the things that needs to be borne in mind. I mean, they're very physically dominant. They're powerful superb hurlers. Like I was talking to an, a good friend of mine in Cork who played into county hurling with Cork who will remain nameless. And he said, like, when you played Limerick back back in the day, they were always physical. They were, like, it was always the toughest physical game you ever got from Limerick. Like, you always woke up after Limerick on a Monday morning after championship match with them. And it was the sorest you would feel. But you'd nearly have always beaten them because their hurling wasn't good enough. But by God... You know, they seem they've sorted that out. <laughs> yeah, just just a slight a slight over correct correction, yeah, yeah. perhaps. Um, Shane, yeah. you mentioned like there's no reliance on one player. And this is one thing I nearly always do now with, with Limerick. I see to see where their where their where their scores from play came from. Their their starting backs had one four from play, and their starting forwards had one six from play, as far as I can see. Throwing a couple of points there from midfield. Um, like as you say, like. What what is what does Barry Nash do? Because I know the one thing the opposition doesn't do is mark him. And there, there has to somebody like Davy Fitz has to be pouring over tape here now, trying to figure out what the hell he's going to do with Barry Nash in a couple of weeks' time. Because like he just popped up for a goal, and you're like, yeah, that's that's normal. The cornerback Barry Nash is as free as a bird, twenty yards from goal on the end, and the forward is willingly giving him the ball. I can imagine in your day, Shane, if you were going through a goal. <laughs> and Carl Barrett, whoever it was, came up on your right hand side. You'd be like, "What the hell are you doing there? And why would where's, I give you the ball?" <laughs> where's Lar? <Lara? Yeah. laughs> it's a, just a it's a yeah, different ball game, yeah. Shane, isn't oh, it? Gee. Oh, that's it. Like that, and uh, you know, there there's no way. Even ten years ago, like five years ago, let's even you know, um, there's no way the cornerback's going past the 45, 65 max. You mm. know, it's it just wasn't in the game plan. 
Whereas what I think teams are doing maybe from looking at it is they want to play the two men in inside full forward line to maybe counteract what Limerick are doing out the field and bring out bodies. So what you're doing is, right, you're bringing out maybe one of your inside forwards out around a half or midfield type role. So what that's actually playing into Limerick's hands from what I'm seeing in that they're allowing a, a, a player like Barry Nash who people have to realise he does not play a cornerback for his club. Like mm. This guy plays midfield, half forward line for his club and he is... I think in one of the games last year in a club championship game for midfield, like this guy could be scoring two seven, two eight, like you know, regularly, like because if because of the hurling he has, he, he was also like when they won under twenty one all Ireland, he was he was getting man of the match and he was in the half forward line. So he's very, very comfortable up the field. So what I think teams are doing is trying to bring out this guy and then who follows from the Limerick full back line? Well, of course, Barry Nash. So I I just feel that I would keep Barry Nash as close to his own goal as is possible to try and curb his score influence or his distribution influence from that middle third. Because he's so comfortable on the ball as he's so athletic. Do you know what? He's fair strong as well. I see him there standing beside Tom Kenny yesterday. Tom Kenny's no small man, Rory, as, as you know. Like he's, yeah. he's, he's a physical yeah. guy. And, and, like, and Barry Nash looking down on him. like mm. You know, even just on the pitch there yesterday. So what I'm saying is, Try something. Would, would, I don't know. Our team's going to try something different. Like here's something absolutely crazy, lads. Right? Play three or four inside the full forward line and try and keep their scoring backs back the field. And like you know, I mean, I'm not to say like go back to the you know driving and then you know first time hurling and ground hurling. <laughs> I'm not going back that far. What I'm saying is, in the 49th and 51st minute yesterday, if you look back at the game, you can he launched in two long balls. They just they just put them in there, and they had they had bodies in there. And what happened was, Massey Kion picked up one, and, and it caused consternation. And 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 Billy Ryan had a goal chance. Okay, and then in the fifty first minute, you get a long ball in from Owen Murphy from a free, and what happens is there's a bit of consternation, and Hugh Lawler gets a point. But they didn't really do it other than that, lads. I think teams are afraid to give away the ball. I don't know if you agree now or not. Teams mm. are looking up mm. now and they're actually afraid to give away the ball, knowing what could counter could come. And that's in all games. And I just think maybe, would you try, this is totally outside the box, have a load of bodies in there, keep their scoring backs, back towards their own goal. You know, like you know, like that episode of Father Ted where Dougal is told, you go mind the corner flag. Like, <laughs> like do you give someone a job say, stand over there and let one of them stand beside you? Because at the moment, we can't afford one four, one five in play from their backs. Yeah. So that would be something different. But look, what he's doing as well, he's hurling his ability, the freedom he gets. I'd say, I'd say he relishes it when he sees one of the full forward line going out around midfield. And I'd say Paul Knorke is like, out you go. And, and, and so I, I don't know... Sorry, sorry, Rory. Yeah. I just, I, I, and one of the things I think I would, well, I'd like to talk about as well is the Aaron Galan goal. Like, you know, a hand pass, and then he doubles on it. Like, doesn't even catch it. He did something like that in his first game back mm. against Westmead. I think he he pulled on a ball first time that was hand passed over to him, and I think he scored a point from it. He did, yeah, yeah. It was I, his first like, point like, back, I think. I don't think people realise how difficult the skill it is to actually double on a ball first time while playing into county hurling and having, you know, hurleys flying around your head and all sorts. And he just pulls on it for it, doesn't even bother catching it. And like, what a finish. And like, he just points, he points at Flanagan as he's coming back out, you know. Thanks and for that. And Flanagan points out <laughs> at Keane Lynch to say thank <laughs> yeah, you for yeah, the pass yeah, for him. Yeah. You know, like, um, I mean, it's but like, extraordinary stuff. Final Rory, do you remember the 2019 league final? Lads? I was just because I only remember because I was at it that day on, on duty. The ball get in, they played in Watford in the 2019 That's league right. final. He actually was scored. Was that in Crow Park? Was that in Crow Park? Park. Park? Yeah, 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 correct. And the ball did not touch the ground, lads, until it hit the net and then hit the ground in Crow Park. Nicky Quaid pinged it out. I think Tom Morris, he got it in his hand. He pinged it into Aaron Galan, who almost Jimmy Barry Murphy esque, Rory. Yeah. Doubled on it yeah. first time. Yeah, yeah. Finished it past Stephen O'Keefe now. Not really? just any. Incredible like, skill. Stephen like. O'Keefe. It was incredible skill. And I'd say, you know, what I, what I always find funny or whatever it is, when the Limerick players are asked about Aaron Galan, they just start laughing. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. because they realise the talent this guy has. Like, you yeah. know, it goes, oh, Aaron, Aaron Glenn. I think Keane was interviewed, Nicky Quaid, Daryl Donovan. They just go, yeah, sure, Aaron. Like, yeah. you know, he's just... Sure, he missed, he, missed, he, missed, he missed a good part of the early season because obviously whatever internal dis- di- di- disciplinary matters that were, were dealt with. 
has, hasn't blunted his game in any way anyway like he hasn't he doesn't look like uh, ah listen just he, their um, force of nature now that was something I noticed last session I, I always noticed the stupid small things I don't think he breaks too many hurls if you look at Aaron Gallant's hurl it looks old did you notice that the hurl he was playing with yesterday yeah it looks weathered yeah mm. he doesn't break he, too many he doesn't know but like you know he and, and like he, you, you, like I mean, even the catch he made lets for Barry Nash's goal, it was just so through the air. It was, like it was league, incredible. Like, and, 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 yeah. and the way down, he grabbed it and then he pops it out and like he's so like, good at that. Like physically, he doesn't mind it. You know what I mean? He doesn't mind mixing it. He doesn't mind what way the ball comes in. Like he's proven mm-hmm. that over and over again. Um, his club mate got club got hurled the year last year in Dermot Burns, and and one of the things he mentioned in his speech that night was Aaron Gillan. Yeah. Like they, like this guy is so like central and key, like you know, to everything that they're doing, and I think they really do appreciate him. And I'd say, when all the when all the controversy came out about him, you know, I'd say, you know, Limerick hurling fans and definitely the players were like, you know, how are we going to deal with this? Well, I wonder what's going to happen. And look, it was dealt with internally, and the way they dealt with it, fair play, and got his punishment or whatever it was, but came back in, and he he's he's massive to them. He's he's just massive. Every everything that they do, like so, because yeah. you can you can you can lamp it in any old way as well. There's a good chance he'll win it. You know, and if he doesn't win it, there's a good chance he'll win it back. Because one of their points yesterday <laughs> came for him to like hooking a guy oh, yeah. and then winning the ball himself after the hook yeah. and passing and it did off. You see, to, did you see? Did you see? Small. I I I I be noticing the small things like you as well. Like he'd be watching. I think it was 69 minutes. Connor Bylan goes through. Connor Bylan got on the world of ball and came on yesterday. Mm. Like I mean, he's one of the unknown lads. Like he's mm. one of the lads we don't really talk about, but he's playing consistently well for his club in the Piercing. Came on, got on the world of ball, did did the simple things right. But the one thing I'd say they might say to him now, maybe during the week, is you need to throw that ball out. So 69 minutes he's going through. He he takes on a shot that he shouldn't. But watch Galan, and Galan has the hands out saying, "You should have gave me that ball." Mm. You know, like it's it's at at the time it's I think it's nearly the last play in the game. Mm. Lads are very very close to it. They're up by eleven points, and he's saying you should have given me that ball. This needs to happen. Like you know, so that's I suppose that's the standards that they're that they want from each other. That's what they're requiring of each other, and and I've no doubt that'll probably be brought up. You know, as one of the one of the things that they'll need to work on. That as John Kiley said um afterwards in his um in his interview. You know. Yeah. Okay. Um. Before we get on to on to Kilkenny, one more question for you, Shane. What what should teams do with the Limerick puck out? Because the, Kilkenny pretty much gave it up again yesterday, and it just, as you said, as much as leaving Barry Nash free, this just seems like the most wrong headed thing you can do against Limerick is let that full back line have the ball in twenty yards of space. It just, I I I, I haven't seen the sense of it for two or three years, and I still can't see the sense of it. And I know there's reasons, and I know you're robbing Peter to pay Paul or whatever, but at this point. I'd rob Peter because <laughs> letting the full back line have the well, ball. Tried, the we, we tried we tried paying Paul. That doesn't work either. <laughs> yeah. 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 I tried to I I push up in a Mikey. It's it's just yeah. I mean, physically, can you can you can you keep it going for seventy five minutes is the thing. But I would push up in him and if you do if you do force them long, then you know, they'll obviously have something there, they'll they'll create space in their half forward line, their half forward line might sit deep and Quaid might ping him in front of him, but Quaid is so good. He, you know, he he put the ball in your pocket like he put it through the even needle. He he can find that space in in between those channels. But for me, I just think ha- let, let, letting them have the ball and they get it to a zone. And when they get it to a zone, then they know that they can either get a quality ball inside or they'll hold on to it again for a second and they'll suck you out. But I would I would push on them and see how long you can you can sustain that. But again, I just think physically it's it's very very hard. Like I mean, you're running into. If you let if you're pushing up at Sean Finn and you get a dunt off him, like I mean, what did he what did he read during the week? He could bench 140 kgs or something like that's that's crazy stuff. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> you, know, you know, he you could you could hire some of these lads to move mobile homes for you, like you know, if you were thinking about relocating um from a a, a beach resort or something like you know. So that's that's what I do, Mike. Yeah, I push up and totally out the bo- outside the box. Yeah. Three four lads and sign the full forward line. See how that would work. Yeah. Um, on Kilkenny then, Rory. Um, mm. it it was it was dispiriting enough now, wasn't it? Really, you know, Adrian towards Mullen the end, came back yeah. and you know, fifteen points in a national final. That's you know, they know that's not good enough. And yeah. we were and talking here last week. You need goals, and there was a couple of chances, but they were half, half chances, chances, half you know? chances. Yeah, I, but even on those half chances, you could actually see how organised Limerick are as well. On top of everything else, in terms of making sure. 
like it's almost like the Lord of the Rings. You you just you're just not going to get through to actually get a clean shot off. And if you do, it's usually a sort of a half shot, hook, a half a half hook, half block. I think from Kilkenny's point of view, like they they know that they probably won't meet Lim. Well, they know that they won't meet Limerick now again until it absolutely essentially matters. And they got a good look at what probably is coming down the tracks for them at one stage or another. Like the chances are Kilkenny will come out of Leinster. <clears throat> we know Limerick will definitely be coming out of Munster. So they they know that there's a potential meeting coming down the tracks again. And um You yeah, don't crack if Limerick didn't get out of Munster, will it? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, do you know what, right? The, the only thing I would say is Waterford of the of the other Munster teams, because Davies so such a maverick when it comes to setting teams up and is liable to and are capable of, you know, as Shane said, throwing some crazy mud at the wall. It might be the one game where it could become very, you know. There might be an element of chaos involved and quite crazy because... Desi Hutchinson do a man-marking job on Barry <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this type <laughs> of stuff. So you just don't know. Like, that 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 could be one fixture, but I I just see them hosing their way through everybody else. But, like, in from a Kilkenny perspective, yeah, I was reading Dale was spot on there again this morning. Just, like, in, you were kind of hoping, would we see TJ didn't come on? What's the point in bringing him on when the game is done? Um, but there are a couple of positives, I think, as well. Like Billy Drennan, I think, got a good taste for what's coming down the tracks. Was still very good on the freeze. And Adrian, obviously, having Adrian Mullen back is a, is a positive. Mm. But yeah, I suppose, look, it's not too many positives. But that seems to be the case for everybody when they went to play Limerick these days. And they shouldn't yeah. really feel any 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 different. You might you might know off the top of your head, yeah. top of your head, Shane, or know from looking in your stats ledger. But um, and I know it's his first year, but like I think, do Kilkenny need a bit more from play from Billy Drennan? Is that is that fair enough to say? Yeah, like suppose he had five points yesterday, wasn't it? It was five frees. Mm -hmm. Um, I just have it down here. Minute forty one, he picks the ball up on his own fourteen yard line. Uh, you know, I suppose that's just the way. Like I suppose Peter Casey does it for Limerick in regards. He's back around, but. Like Billy Drennan's their top scorer. He's 265 score coming into the game. He's averaging 12 points. He, he gets held scoreless from play yesterday. And, but he is a serious, serious free taker. So. But like as I said, in the 40, 41st minute, he, he ends up back in his own 14 because he's, he's probably tracking maybe Nash like or someone. You know, yeah. maybe he has to track him all the way back. So that's probably something they look at. Positives otherwise. Um, I thought Mullen was really good and I thought mm. they took him off because I think he had enough done. Like, they felt he had enough done. He had three points scored from play. He got on a lot of ball. Paddy Deegan is, um, he knows where the posts are, lads, too. Like, you know, um, he's, he's an accurate guy. And I thought he was good. I thought Hugh Lawler had, had a very good game, lads. Um, particularly in the first half. He, his athletic ability, his footwork, his ability to win high ball. Um, they seem to want to be going maybe with Tommy Walsh at three and him at six. If they can afford to do that, that's good. Because I, I, I think he's a serious yoke. And, like, you know, even the bodies that they're down from the All-Ireland final last year, like Mikey Carey, Connor Brown, obviously TJ didn't play. Even if they had all them lads, and as, as I was saying to you, Rory, like, I mean, if TJ had to come on yesterday or when they do play TJ, like, he'd want to be having some game. To bridge to be that, making yeah. up yeah, 11, 11 points and 20 wides, like, for the opposition. So, there are, there are some positives, you know. Um, de definitely, I thought I, I thought Mullen in particular was, was looked really really good on the ball. He looked he looked match fit and he got a big clap in the back off the S and C guy when when he went off as well because he put in a, re a really good shift. But um, as regards Billy, like I think what Billy Drennan learned yesterday is worth anything to him. Um, mm -hmm. I said during the week it might even be worth more than him winning a league medal because he's playing in as close to championship as he's going to get pre championship and he knows now that look. I need to get on the score. I need to get on the. I need to be on the sheet from play as well, like you know, to to have a to have the bigger the bigger influence. And um, what he what he learned there yesterday, I'm sure, even position wise, Mikey, you know, where he found himself sometimes, I'd say he would have learned a lot. And Derek Link probably would have learned a lot about Billy Drennan as well yesterday. Um, as as in regards, we need to keep our scores in near the goal and get a better ball into them. So, yeah, they would be they would be the positives I would take from anyway from Kilkenny point of view. Fair fair play for finding some positives, Shane. Um, all right, lads, we will leave it there and uh, no hurling next week. Um, so we'll be back week after to look ahead to the start of the round robins, um, where 11 teams will 
batter into each other and at the end of it Limerick will win the All-Ireland uh, or maybe not uh, thank you Shane and thank you earlier to David and thank you of course to Rory and we'll be back with you on Thursday so chat to you then good luck bye bye by winning the last two matches on the road and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it! He hits it! It's over the bar! Oh! Holy Moses!